If you have ever failed a football trial, then this video is perfect for you. I'm going to start with a story. A story of how I nearly signed with the biggest team in Indonesia. I was 21. It was the first time that I had ever come to Asia and it was my friend that introduced me to this agent, this one big agent from I think Liberia and he said to me when I first met him, okay you are gonna sign for this team 100% Pasija Jakarta. Now if you don't know Pasija Jakarta, Pasija Jakarta is the biggest team in Indonesia. They get 30, 40,000 people to their game. It is a massive club with massive supporters. So he told me when I got there, you will definitely be signing with this team because I brought in this coach. I signed this coach, but you have to play center back. And I'm like, mate, I'm not a center back. I've never played. And he's like, nah, don't worry. Don't worry. You just win the ball, you pass the ball, just be aggressive and you'll be fine. So I'm like, all right, whatever, I'll do it. And then he says to me, look, for your first season, we're gonna pay you 30,000 US dollars. And I was thinking to myself, and I told him, look, I can get a full-time job in Australia and earn more than that. You've gotta make it 50. And without even hesitating, he said, sure. So you think like, what kind of money is he getting if I sign for this team? But anyway, like I say, you know, in Asia or wherever you are, if you've got a football contract and you're happy with the money that you're getting, I say, that's fine with me. Whatever the agent is doing behind, you know, closed doors, then that's their business. But if you're happy with the money you're getting, then so be it. But that's my philosophy. So he agreed with 50,000. And then he's like, okay, your first training is tomorrow. So he picks me up, dress all nice, put on like a nice white shirt. You know, the first time I'm coming. Impressions are important in football, wherever you go. It is very superficial, but this is how it is. And I had this white shirt, long black pants, nice black shoes, looking professional. And just on that point, like when you go to trial, you should always, if the club doesn't offer you uh, a training kit that they have that everyone else is training with then you should get your own and it should not be like you know Real Madrid Arsenal it should be like a nice a nice kit maybe from one of your previous clubs a nice top that matches the the bottoms with the socks everything you know in in unison instead of having like a red shirt with black pants and all over the shop so the next day comes around he picks me up dressed all nice, go to the stadium. When I get to the stadium, there's like five or six reporters there and they're like taking photos and like, who are you, who are you? My agent told me not to tell them. So I went into the change room and introduced to the coach. The agent introduced me, shook hands. He asked me where I play. I said, centre back, defensive midfield, attacking midfield. You know, I can play a lot of positions. So he puts me in centre back and the training goes really well. I win the ball, I'm aggressive, you know, I look good. So after the, after the training, the agent's really happy and he's like, oh mate, you did really well, you're gonna sign with this team. I'll bring you back to your hotel, just wait and relax and I'll, I'll set up everything. A couple days later, he calls me and he's so angry at this coach because he brought in this coach and he thought that he could sign me easily. But the coach, he wants to bring in the top scorer of the league. If the coach wants that, then the agent has no power. So he was furious and I didn't sign in the end. Now the reason why I'm telling you about this story is because it relates to this video about failing football trials. Failing football trials is common and sometimes it's not about your performance. There's other factors involved. So in this case, the coach wanted a player and the agent, even though he had a lot of power, which is very important in football, he still couldn't sign me. Sometimes the management want to choose a player, 
The coach doesn't want that player, but the management has more power. So sometimes the management chooses the player while the coach is just helpless. So with football trials, sometimes these factors are involved in selecting a player and you can't control this, it's out of your hands. Sometimes agents will pay management to sign their player. So normally when you sign a player, you get a sign on agent fee. So let's just say, for example, Vietnam, for example, has a big sign on fee. Sometimes it's like 50,000 US, 40,000 US, 30,000 US, a big amount. And 10,000 will go to the agent, 10,000 will go to another agent, and then 10,000 will go to the management. This is how it works. So if you have a strong agent, sometimes it's, it's very important, even, even if you're not such a great player. So in my career, I've had lots of trials, maybe over 20, maybe close to 30 teams. Some of them I, I didn't pass. It's so common, every footballer, pretty much 80, I would say over 80% have failed a football trial. A few weeks ago I was trialling with another team before I came to Kelantan and the first training that I went to, you won't believe this, but there was 22 foreign players there. This is not including the team, 22 foreign players. And we played 11 vs 11. And from that 22 trialists, only one player got signed. And the other trialists, there were some very good players. And that's how it is. It is difficult to get a football team and a lot of people will fail. So failure is common. And if you failed your football trial, whatever level you, level you are, if you're under 13, you're under 14, under 18, senior football, it doesn't matter. So many people fail trials, it's so common. You just gotta keep on going. You may be doubting yourself, am I good enough, am I good enough? Oh, I don't think I'm good enough, maybe I should stop, but don't stop. So I love reading autobiographies. I like reading about people's situations, the environments that they grew up in, how they handled certain situations and the stories that they tell. I find that very interesting. And I just read a book by Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank and he talks about his career. And also in his career, he also failed at trials. And he was one of the top strikers and he failed as well, so it's so common. So, like I said again, don't be disheartened, keep on going. I've got to tell you now the story of Andrew Naboo. Andrew Naboo played for Negri Sembilan, the same team I played for last year. He played two or three years ago in the Malaysian Premier League, the second division. He was the top goal scorer for the club and also his team was first or second in the league. And he got sacked at the mid-season transfer. And at the time, he was considering quitting football, not playing anymore and joining his father in real estate. But he went back to Australia. He signed, I think, a replacement deal, you know, when someone's injured, part of the squad, you know, the, one of the fringe players. But he managed to work his way into the first team. He did really well. He scored goals. And Uruwa Red Diamonds, the biggest team in Japan, signed him up. When he played for that team, the Socceroos came calling. The Socceroos is the Australian national team. And when he got into the Australian national team, he went to the World Cup. And just a couple years earlier, he was playing in the Malaysian Premier League. If he decided to quit, then he would be working a, a normal full-time job. But instead, he kept on going, and look at him now. All right, guys, just, this is just a short video. I'm telling you, in your football career, you're gonna have football trials which you don't pass. It's a part of the game. So many people failed. So don't be disheartened, keep on going. And that's the thing I wanna tell you. In your career, you will probably fail, but you've gotta keep on going. All right, guys, thanks again for watching, and until next time, ciao.